So lush, easy projects fully explained. How to edit a photo before starting in Photo Stitch and how to complete a design in Photo Stitch. Hello, I'm Christine from So Lush and today we're going to be looking at the Photo Stitch program which comes as part of PE Design. I'm going to start with the photo that you choose. Um, a good photo is the best foundation for getting a good result from Photo Stitch. Um, this photo, which is my first example, shows a dog or a dog's face that to, to draw around, but it's the light that bothers me. You won't get a good result um, with this photo from uh, Photo Stitch just because the light is brighter on one side of the dog's face to the other. If I show you what happens when we brighten it to try to accommodate the left side of the face, you'll see that the right side of the face gets brighter as well and it's still unusable. Um, I'll just brighten it once more and then you'll be able to see that now you've got this um, dazzling uh, around the snout of the dog and very bright on the right hand side of the dog. The left hand side of the dog is still uh, darker and um, it just will be an unsatisfactory um, finish for, for this sort of a picture. If you're taking a picture yourself, try to take your dog in full light, wait for a sunny day um, and my advice would be, other photographers would say different, but my advice would be take the picture on a sunny day but inside. So close to a window, close to French doors, make sure the light is equal when it's shining on the dog uh, and take your photo then. The photos taken outdoors on a sunny day either end up with deep shadow on one part of the dog or if it's in full sunshine and there aren't any shadows that it tends to dazzle a bit and when you come to um, prepare your photo for photo stitch it's still very difficult to get a really good result. The second picture I've got is this picture here. This, this is a difficult picture for photo stitch to read. I'll show you again what happens when we brighten this picture up. You're getting a, a brightening in the face, but you'll notice that the top of the dog's head is now in extreme light. If we did it one more time, you'll get the full effect. So now you've got a nice bright face for the dog, but you'll see um, again the dazzling effect on the very top of the dog. This wouldn't be a suitable picture for um, photo stitch either. The grass around the dog is a problem because um, you can't easily separate the grass from the dog. If you are to include the grass in your picture, you'll end up with um, green picked up in the dog itself and it's not something that you actually want. So yeah, just, to, just a reminder to um, be very critical about the picture that you're going to use. This is the picture we're going to be using today. It's a picture of a pit bull terrier um, in uh, brown and white. You can see immediately that the light is diffuse across this picture. There's no bright and dark side to the dog's face and also that it's a very clear outline of the dog. Hasn't got anything impinging on the outline which makes it a good candidate. You'll notice that it's a one in seven photo, which means it's a huge file. So um, one of the things I'm going to do is reduce the size of the file. Um, the other things to look for are the eyes. Mouth needs a bit of definition. And I think I'll just put some lines around there to make it a bit easier for photo stitch to pick up. Um, he's up against a red background and that can sometimes lead to stray bits of red getting into your dog. And so we'll fix that up in photo stitch. The other thing is that the bottom of the picture isn't helpful for um, photo stitch. This will be quite unrecognizable because it's got um, so many little bits about it. So I'm not going to do the legs at all. I'm going to do a head and shoulders of this dog and I'll do I'll cut the bottom part off in photo stitch as well. 
So to make a start, um, I'm using JSEC Paint Shop Pro 7 for this. This is my photo editing uh, program. It's an old program, but I love it because I know it well and it does what I want it to do. You will probably have a different program and a more modern program, but it won't matter because the things I'm showing you um, in this uh, video are the same for all photo uh, editing programs. I'm going to start with lightening the program and to do this I go to colours and adjust and then brightness and contrast. And I've got my brightness and contrast set to 20% which means this is going to make the picture 20% lighter than it is at the moment and it'll do my brightness and contrast together so I've got them set at the same amount. I'll just say OK to that and immediately you can see the difference that it makes. It makes everything a bit brighter and lighter, a bit nicer to see. Okay, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size. And I go to resize and this has got, um, I can either do percentage of original or I can do pixel size. I'm going to do percent of the original and set it to 50% and therefore I know that this picture is going to end up half as big as it is at the moment. Um, I also am going to resize all layers and I'm going to maintain aspect ratio. It set the aspect ratio here to what the picture is and I want that to stay the same so I don't get anything distorted. So I'm just going to say OK and although it's done what I've asked it to do, it's still a fairly big file. I'm, I'm just going to see if I need to make it any smaller. Now that's probably okay. So it'll be good for working on and I can manage that quite well. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at those eyes. To start with I'm going to actually change the points of light. So I need to blot out the ones that we've already got and I'm doing this with a paintbrush tool and it's set to fine. So it's just a, oh, I can show you the setting for that. Um, yeah, it's size two. So it's, it's just a little um, paintbrush tool. And just cover over what's there. And the same on the other side. Now I'm going to put those points of light back in and again I'm using the fine paintbrush, changing the colour to white and putting those points of light back in. You need to make the points of light fairly big so Photo Stitch can actually pick them up. If you'd left those little um, points, multiple points of light in the eye, um, photo stitch won't pick them up and it, either it'll ignore them or it makes it look like um, there's something wrong around the eyes. So that looks fine to me. Um, now we're going to do around the dog's mouth. Um, I'm going to choose the same tool and I'm going to choose black again. And I'm just putting a line down from the nose and then just following around the curve of the dog's mouth. And then lastly, I'm going to look at um, sharpening this picture a bit. So I just go into my sharpening menu and you can see that by sharpening it makes um, all of the details stand out so the fur looks um, more detailed around the eyes is a bit more detailed um, it's just it just helps in uh, with photo stitch picking everything up I think we're finished with this now and so the last thing you need to do before you go over to photo stitch is you need to save it you need to go in and give it a different name 
but put it somewhere where you know where you'll be able to find it. When you're um, using a picture to make a design in uh, photo stitch, you can change the size of the design by um, changing the size in photo stitch of your hoop. It's never a good idea to make uh, try and make a small design bigger by just enlarging it and the same goes for making it smaller. You'll lose definition, it won't be a good result. The best thing to do is if you want different sizes and today we're going to be doing a medium size and a small size is to digitise two separate designs from the same picture. So we need, I've opened my picture onto the background and we need photo stitch one and colour. And this is the tool you'll be using for this, this little node tool here. And you just need to pull the nodes away from the corners like this. And remember I said I was going to not include the bottom part of the dog and so I'm just doing um, a shoulders uh, section here and that this will remove just this part of the dog for um, digitising and the rest of the picture will be discarded. Pulling the straight lines towards the object you're looking to cut out and what that does is it creates a node and it leaves the straight line where you put it and then you can start further up and start pulling another piece of the straight line. Just keep working like that around the dog until you've got a cutout that you're happy with. When you've finished this is what the cutout will look like. Now we can actually tune the image uh, here. You can make it sharper, you can make it lighter you can change other um, areas down here, but um, because we've done so much editing already, I don't think we'll have to do any of these, but I can just show you what they do. If you pull this along, you can see it's making the picture sharper, but in our case, it's also distorting it, so we don't need that. Um, you can make it lighter if it's dark, but again, Oh, we don't need that it's a good it's a good picture you can change the contrast here giving it more contrast or less contrast and here you can change how colorful it is so you can make it more colorful or less colorful but we're just going to leave those we're going to say next So here's the dog that we cut out. One of the things that we do need to do is we need to check that there's no uh, p p little bits of red that have um, crept into our picture. I can't see any down there. There might be some there, so I'm just going to go back and fix that. Yes. So if I just pull that back in so that it's on the dog's coat, that will stop me getting rogue red in my picture. And now we can have a look. I also think this is a little bit high. I'm going to make that a bit lower. Yes, it's a better balance. On this page, you need to look at design settings and you need to look at what size hoop you're going to use. And we're going to do a medium size one to start with. That's 130 by 180 or 5 by 7 inches. The rest is, is left the same. Um, my page is white. And my machine type is for a single machine, single needle machine, which is right for me. And then we need to fit to page. Very important that you fit it to page. Otherwise, you'll 
finish your design and then you'll find that your machine won't sew it out because it's over the, um, the size of the hoop. So that looks pretty good. We'll go to the next stage. So here we are at the final page and it's converted the um, picture into stitches now and you can see it's a pretty good uh, representation. I'll show you what all of these things do. The first thing you notice is run pitch and this is the length of your stitches. It's set to three millimetres and I like to reduce that down a bit. I'm going to reduce it to 2.6 and update and you'll see that it makes um, a difference to the picture because it makes it finer, which is pretty good. Um, you can notice those points of light in the eye that I, we did in the um, editing process and also the edges of the mouth which are now quite distinct. Looks quite good. Um, I'm then going to look at the colours. The colours look good to me. Um, I've set mine for 10. Um, you can put more colours in or less colours in. I find 10 is a good starting point. But I'm going to take out this one here called Winter Sky. And that's because when I use that, it tends to make the pictures look a bit blue. So I don't want that. So I'm going to click on it, remove it, and then add another colour. And I want more grey gradient. So I'm going to add a darker grey. That one there. Okay, now I'm going to update my preview. That looks fine. Um, I can now make it even finer by moving these, uh, this slider along. That looks quite good. I might leave that like that. Um, I could make it even better by doing that. Actually, that looks better. I'm going to leave it at fine. Um, the other thing is that you wanted to sew the page colour. Now, remember I set my page to white and if I ask it not to sew the page colour, you'll see this has disappeared and that's because um, it it's, shows up white in the picture and because I've said don't change the um, don't sew the page colour, it's taken it out of the um, the sewing and left it as white because it'll show up white from behind but I actually like it to sew all over so I'm going to say no put that back and now it's put that back as stitches update that again and then you can now select from candidates I'm not going to do brighter uh, uh, brightness and contrast again um, because uh, I've already done it and I think it's it's bright enough but I can actually look at how it would look if I had done that by looking at select from candidates. This shows you from lightest to darkest and you can go through and see if you think one of these is better than what you've got. I don't so I'm going to leave it like that. And now I'm going to finish. Okay, so that's that's my picture, my um, embroidery in my frame. And over here, you'll find it's got all the colours listed in colour order. They've got blue squares around them. And to do anything with those, you need to click to remove the blue squares. And then you can go through and have a look at these colours by themselves. Before we go to stitch out, I'll just say a little bit more about uh, colours. You can change any of these layers um, just by clicking on them and going over to the thread chart and choosing a different thread. So if I, for example, if I thought that would look better in red, I could just change that to red. It, it automatically changes on the stitch out as well and you can see that actually it's not what you want to do and so you can click to go back. Um, there's a couple on here though that I might like to change. That's one of them. It's an 1800 colour on the um, Sulky Rayon colour chart. And these colours are very hard to get in the UK. They're fine uh, in America, but um, I've had 
a lot of trouble trying to get them. I've got them by sending to America and getting them posted over to me, um, but I haven't been able to buy them here. So when these come up in the colour chart, uh, what I do is I go to my colour chart, which I've called my chart for dogs, and I look down the colour chart for something that looks similar, and then I just swap them over. And in this case, it might be that brown there. Oh, that looks similar because it's exactly the same. Um, there is a dark ecru that looks quite like it. There it is. If when you come to your stitch out and you start stitching, if you think that's too light, look take your thread to your thread collection look through your thread collection holding your thread and find one that's just a little bit darker than that one what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you what this uh, photo would look like if we'd done it four by four or a hundred by a hundred so first of all i say new and then I go to my image photo. Because I've already done this, you can see at the top here, it's got the, um, the cutout mask that we used on the big um, design. And I'm going to use that one again. And that should be pretty good. Okay, then I'm going to say next. And I'm going, I'm going to change the hoop size to 100 by 100 millimeters that's four by four inches okay same dog now i'm going to fit to page and then i'm going to say next as you can see already it's not as clear um, and it doesn't give you as much detail as the previous uh, bigger design did but it's it's okay so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to change that from rayon to my chart for dogs and I'm going to update the preview I've no idea what that rogue pink is so I'm just going to get rid of that And I do actually want a bit more gradient in the grey, so I'm going to go in with a slightly lighter grey. Yep, that looks okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to change the run pitch to 2.5, which, which starts to give you a little bit more definition. And I'm going to change the sewing option to a bit finer and I'll see how that looks not bad I think I'll go up to the, the finest okay so I can now say finish and that's going to show you what it'll look like four by four when I've um, stitched these both out I'll um, show you the um, the difference between the two sizes. So you can see this is the large hoop size and that's come out quite well. It's quite a, a good amount of definition in it. You can see those um, points of light in the eyes. We move on to this comparison. This is the um, two uh, designs together. So you can see the difference between the large and the small.